Dare I say I'm actually playing a well-optimized PC game on the day of its release? Uh, I'm playing on a GTX 1060 right now at native 1080p resolution, and I am for the most part hanging out around 60 frames per second. This is the low graphic setting. The biggest issue I have with the low graphic setting is you'll see that the draw distance is quite obvious. So you will see things drawing in as you go, but this game's pretty. I mean, even look at it at low settings. This looks nice. And again, I'm getting around 60 frames per second at these settings. And again, this isn't the like, okay, you're at 720p upscaled to 1080p to get 30 FPS. It's not that at all. Low settings, 1080p. There's no upscaling being applied right now, but it is hanging out around 60 FPS. Not only that, I've been playing this uh, for a couple hours now, and I've mostly been playing on, on a uh, RTX 3060 rather than the 1060, but I will say I have not seen any shader compilation stutter. I've seen only the occasional tiny frame time blip on camera cuts. Um, but overall, it has been buttery smooth, no traversal stutter. And I think one reason is that this is CryEngine. This is not Unreal Engine 5, and we don't get a lot of uh, new CryEngine games these days. So really kind of cool to see. And again, very happy to see the old GTX 1060 hang out around 60 FPS. Not only that, it's way better than the system requirements actually suggested. I only bothered trying a 1060 because it's the minimum GPU, but they're, they were claiming this for 1080p 30 FPS at low settings. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not dipping below 60, but it is at 60 more often than it is uh, anywhere near 30, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I will say I'm on a higher end CPU than what they listed for the minimum. I was originally gonna try this out on my i5-9600K based system to be a little closer to what they listed for minimums. Um, and unfortunately that PC is power cycling dead right now. So <laughs> uh, can't do much about that. Uh, I am curious, I haven't actually tried increasing the graphic settings yet. Uh, maybe we'll try going up to medium settings where the draw distances do look significantly better. That's how I've been playing on my RTX 3060. Uh, let's go ahead and pop out and, and see what happens. Okay, we're definitely down into the mid 40s now. So there is a big uh, performance cost to going up to medium. But you guys see that as I go through this field now, there is still pop-in, but it's way further from the camera, especially as the grass is drawing and things like that. I'll also say this is a very slow-paced game for the most part. Uh, so playing in the mid-40s, I don't think is a disaster. Um, uh, but again, it was really nice to be able to get 60 FPS at the low settings if you wanted to. And again, that's without any resolution scaling. Um, this was a game I was a little afraid would have some CPU limitations once I got to a town area, but I haven't been seeing that. But we're not going to expose CPU limitations on a lower-end GPU like this anyway. So how about we pop in the RTX 3060, uh, which is the game's recommended GPU for 1080p medium. All right, I've popped in the RTX 3060, still on the Ryzen 5 5600X-based machine, and we are around... Uh, well, I mean, we often are around 100 FPS. It uh, goes below that, but honestly, in this town area, we are doing great. Uh, let's go ahead and run down into more of a uh, looking out into the wilderness type of scene. Uh, you can see with a lot of foliage, it can dip a bit, but honestly, we're still above 80 FPS or so quite, uh, quite often. The graphics look nice. This is currently 1080p medium settings. And this GPU was the recommended uh, for 1080p medium settings at 60 FPS. Uh, however, I've actually been playing this pretty much entirely on the 3060 uh, for a few hours to get an idea of how the game was running. And I've been playing it at 1440p. Uh, check this out, 1440p medium settings on the 3060 and we're mostly around 60 FPS. It does dip below it at times in, in, in the slightly more demanding areas, but I would say the average is right around 60 at 1440p medium settings. But I've actually, when I've been playing this, uh, been using DLSS. This game does have both FSR and DLSS. There's no XESS support. It would have been nice to have that. Uh, but using DLSS uh, quality, the frame rates are gonna bump 
uh, back up high, similar to what we were getting at 1080p native. Uh, so you can see here that we are, again, bouncing around between 80 and 100 FPS, depending on exactly what's going on. And yeah, it's the medium settings, but the medium settings, I mean, look, this looks nice. I have noticed some graphical issues with the game uh, that just don't look amazing uh, at these medium settings that I've been playing at when there was reflections on the water, for example. There's a pond early on in the game. And when a character would be uh, occluding the pond, you could tell there was some weirdness happening with the screen space reflections and things like that. I've seen an odd shadow here or there as well. Uh, but overall, I think the graphics look nice, nothing revolutionary or mind-blowing, but look how smooth the frame time graph is. We're not getting stutters. I haven't had shader compilation. And again, even though we're now pushing close to 100 FPS in a village, I'm not showing signs of a CPU uh, uh, limitation. The GPU is 100% utilized and there's no GPU wait time. I'm actually curious, I haven't actually done this yet off camera. If we push DLSS more aggressively, not because I think we need to, but because I want to relieve the burden on the GPU a bit, I want to push in to see if we can start seeing the GPU waiting on the CPU a bit. In other words, get an idea of the CPU limited performance. We're starting to see a few more spikes of GPU weight. It's not bad, uh, but it is a little less smooth now. So it's looking like the 5600X in this area is probably tapped out a little over 100 FPS. But for this type of game, that seems totally fine. Um, so actually, I think we could even get away with more aggressive settings here. If we back DLSS back off to quality, um, I think we could go ahead and try out high settings at 1440p DLSS quality on the RTX 3060. And yeah, um, frame rates are pretty good. So. Again, I've been able to play this game for about three hours up to this point on this setup, and it's been really, really smooth. Uh, and I can't tell you that the game doesn't get more demanding past this area. If you want to get a game, uh, you know, a performance analysis day one, I'm not going to be able to play for 40 hours and still get you a, a video in a timely manner. Uh, however, um, yeah, I've seen no indication to suggest that things will become disastrous later on, even if they do get more demanding. So it's been really nice. Uh, but I have heard that the experimental settings for graphics uh, get absolutely insane. I haven't tried them out yet, and I kind of want to try it out. Uh, not really on my 3060, though, although let's go ahead and just kick it on and see what happens. I do have a 5090-based uh, system set up right now, so I'm kind of interested in trying that out. Yeah, Experimental is certainly dipping our performance more into the 30s here, so probably not the greatest way to play it on the 3060. Uh, let's go ahead and pop in a super high-end build and just see what this thing looks like at 4K. Well, that looks weird. Um, <laughs> so I just loaded up uh, on the RTX 5090 on Experimental Settings. And um, anyway, so apparently the game is not entirely bug or glitch free at the moment. Um, anyway, first time I've seen something like that pop up. Uh, but I should actually probably turn on my frame rate counter here, shouldn't I? I thought I had it on. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, there we go. 5090-9800X3D. Uh, we are currently on the experimental graphics settings, which, by the way, can I just comment on that? I really like when games aren't afraid to offer a super demanding graphic setting. But I think that a lot of times the user reaction to, I can't max out this game on my hardware, it's unoptimized, uh, is a little bit scary for developers. So I like labeling it a maximum setting that's really beyond what you reasonably need. Um, something like experimental or even popping up a warning box or something like that where it kind of tells people like, look, these aren't really the settings where you, 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 like these are not optimized settings. It's just to push hardware as far as you possibly can. And uh, so I like that naming scheme. I'm just going to mention that. By the way, we're currently at native 4K resolution using DLAA. So uh, yeah. So anyway, the uh, 5090 is going to absolutely handle this game. Um, I mean, you would hope it would. But guys, there's a lot of games out there where at their maximum settings, uh, the uh, 5090 isn't running native 4K without DLSS at like 150 frames per second. 
And again, this looks quite nice. Let's take a look out here, see what the draw distances look like at the experimental setting. Um, yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, I don't really know what else there is to say about performance other than, I mean, I guess we could get an even higher frame rate if we uh, kicked on DLSS a little bit, because while DLAA looks great, DLSS quality at 4K looks pretty dang good too. Uh, let's see how far we can scale. Uh, looks like we're at around 200 frames per second now. Frame time graph still looking good. The 9800X3D seems to be keeping up, uh, even in the village area here. And then just for fun, let's go ahead and go down to, um, uh, let's go down to DLSS performance mode, but leave it at the experimental settings, see what happens. All right, uh, I was curious if we'd start running into CPU limitations a little bit more here. Um, didn't gain a ton more performance, but it is still mostly GPU limited, it looks like. Uh, still over 200 FPS for the most part here. And yeah, there is that. Of course, obviously we could turn the graphics settings down from experimental, <laughs> which I guess we could do, but there's not really any need to. The performance is good enough. Uh, let's go to ultra settings just to see uh, what happens. Yeah, it looks like frame rates are higher now. Uh, not that we super duper needed that. What if we went back to uh, native AA? Anyway, uh, I don't want to like uh, belabor this video farther than it needs to be. Uh, like I said, I've played this game for the first few hours on the RTX 3060 at 1440p medium DLSS quality, and um, it, it was a good experience. Uh, like I said, stutter-free, game looked pretty good. <laughs> uh, it's not doing anything brand new or mind-blowing graphics-wise. Uh, as far as enjoying the game goes, I will say that uh, I mean, if you played the first Kingdom Come Deliverance and you enjoyed it, I, I would say that you would enjoy this. Um, it seems like more of the same but better, maybe a little bit more polished. I'm only a few hours in, so I can't give a full review. Uh, if you didn't like the first game, you probably wouldn't like this. It still very much is what it is, which uh, for me is awesome. Good writing, very immersive, um, uh, good voice acting, all of that. Plot seems to be interesting so far. Uh, so yeah, to me, it just seems like uh, a more and better version of the original, which is, I think, what a lot of people want in a sequel, and it's nice to see it running well. Uh, because the original could be very CPU limited, and like I said, I'm not in the biggest cities yet here. So that's my only caveat I'll give for this video, is I am not yet in the biggest cities. So we'll have to see what happens later on, but in the first few hours, performance has been great, and no stutters!